Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be going over Lewis structures, which are a very important part of IB chemistry. So what is a Lewis structure? A Lewis structure is basically just a visual representation of a compound. So actually we'll start off with an example such as water. So we know that water has the two hydrogens and one oxygen atom. So if we represent that, we can actually start to draw it like so. So hydrogen there, an oxygen there, and a hydrogen here. The reason being because we're going to have to start to draw the bonds and electrons around these atoms. So the reason I've, I'm going to explain why I put the hydrogens on either side just now. So we know that oxygen is in group 16, group 16, which means it has six valence electrons. Meanwhile, hydrogen is in group one, which means it has one valence electron. So what we want to do is first represent that by drawing them on the diagram. So let's represent um, hydrogens with dots and oxygen with crosses. So we're going to draw six electrons around the oxygen and one around the hydrogen each. So here, the reason why I've put the hydrogens on either side is because hydrogens can only form one bond. So because they need two electrons to fill up their valence shell. That's what it's about with when drawing Lewis structures. So if you would place the hydrogen in the center, it would have to form two bonds because it's connected to two different things, which would unfortunately exceed its quota for its valence shell. Electron, valence shell. So what we can do is we can automatically draw one bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen since the hydrogen wants one more electron. So now it's got this oxygen atom there. And we can draw another one between the oxygen and the hydrogen on this side. Now, as we can see, we also know that oxygen needs to have eight electrons in its valence shell to be satisfied. And over here, by drawing two bonds, we can see that it's already got those eight because one from the hydrogen here, one from the hydrogen here, and you've got six extra that the oxygen already has. So these covalent bonds will therefore form the molecule that looks like this. But we also have to draw the lone pairs, so like so. So that's the answer for this one over here. That's how you draw water. And it's just very important to note that from this, we can already tell that hydrogen can only form one bond because it, can, it, can, it has to get one more electron only. And oxygen usually forms two bonds so that it can get, um, it can fill it, its um, outer shell to eight electrons. And as you can see in this diagram here, we do not write um, the dot or the crosses that are in the bond. The bond represents two electrons. 2e minus. Now we're going to move on to draw this Lewis structure for ammonia, which is NH3. So we're going to write down the group number for each of the elements cons that constitute ammonia. So we're going to represent nitrogen with x's, and this is in group 15, so it has five valence electrons. Meanwhile, we have hydrogen, which we already determined has in group one and has one valence electron. And based on this, we can already tell that hydrogens can only form one bond. So therefore, if it has three other atoms to bond to, it would not be feasible because it can't form three bonds. So we're going to keep nitrogen in the center because nitrogen actually can form three bonds. Remember that most elements want to fill up their um, shell, uh, their outer shell with eight electrons, except for hydrogen and helium, which only have two in their valence electrons, two valence electrons in their outer shell. Um, so it's like this is known as the octet rule, and it's very important that we consider that. So we're going to place nitrogen in the center with hydrogens around it. And we're going to draw the electrons in. I'm going to draw that actually closer to the hydrogens just so it's easier to represent. And then nitrogen's going to have five electrons. Now we can start to pair up the bonds, like so. And what we're left with, what we're left with once we um, turn those two electrons into a bond and we put in the valence electrons that are remaining, we're left with something that looks like this, with two valence electrons for the, for the nitrogen. So that's how you draw ammonia. All right, so this next Lewis structure I'm going to show is actually quite interesting. So we're asked to draw a Lewis structure for NH4+. So what that means is that this, ha this molecule has an overall charge of plus one. And what is important, therefore, is that because it's plus one, that means that it's lost one electron. 
because we remember we had NH3. Well, NH4 has all those electrons stated, but it has one less. So what does that mean? Where do we, when we draw the structure, where do we take the electron out of? So what we need to know is generally know the structure. So what that means is that we know that nitrogen can form more than one bond, unlike hydrogen. So it's most likely going to be in the center. So let's draw that right now. So we have N, H, 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 and H. Now, the question now becomes, where do we remove that extra electron from? So we have the hydrogens, which each have one electron, the nitrogen has five. But in NH4, that means that either one of the hydrogens loses an electron or um, the nitrogen loses one of the electrons, becoming four. So it depends on the electronegativity, which is why I've got the table up. So we can see that nitrogen has an electronegativity of 3.04 and hydrogen has electronegativity of 2.20. So what that means is we need to be looking for the element with the lower electronegativity and take away the take away the electron from there. The reason being is because electronegativity is a tendency to like gain electrons and an atom is more possessive of its electrons if it has a higher electronegativity, as stated before. So for example, fluorine has a really, really high electronegativity, so it's not going to want to lose its electrons like, for example, potassium, which is only 0.82. So what we need to do is remove the hydrogen electron and draw the rest of them in. So just referring to nitrogen since x's and hydrogen since dots as before, we can draw dots on all the hydrogens except one of them. It doesn't matter which one you take it off. And then nitrogen will still have its five electrons like so. And now we can proceed to do the bonding. So this one is obviously going to be a bond. So is this one and this one. But now we have a problem. So hydrogen here, even though it doesn't have electrons, it's still part of the molecule. So we need to figure out a way to form a bond here. But the problem is hydrogen has no electrons to give. So how are we supposed to form a covalent bond? Well, the key here lies in the fact that we cannot just establish a normal covalent bond. We have to, because a normal covalent bond has to have one electron from both parties. In this case, nitrogen still has two electrons remaining over here, but hydrogen has none. So if nitrogen could give both of those electrons to hydrogen, we'd have a complete structure. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to give these two to hydrogen. And this is what's known as a dative bond. So dative bond, you can represent by normal bond, except with an arrow at the end, to show the direction of where the electrons are coming from. So in this case, we'd, we'd write the structure as N, H, H, H. And then H would be here, but we'd have an arrow pointing towards the hydrogen to show that nitrogen is giving two of its electrons to hydrogen. It's also important to note that the plus sign means that we have to show that the, whole, that the overall molecule is encased in a charge. So we're going to draw square brackets around the molecule and put plus sign at the end. So this is the answer to how to draw NH4 plus as a Lewis structure. All right, so we're going to do one last example before wrapping up the video. So we're going to draw a Lewis structure for CO3 2 minus, which is essentially the carbonate ion. So what we're going to first going to do is write down the information for each of the elements. So carbon is in group 14. So it has four valence electrons. Meanwhile, oxygen is in group 16. So it has six valence electrons. So in this moment, we can still see that carbon only needs to form um, three bonds, and so does oxygen. But since there are more oxygens, we're actually going to put a carbon a carbon atom in the middle. Usually when you have molecules like this, which have two um, elements only, but one of them is more numerous than the other, you'd put the one that's less numerous in the center. So we can kind of draw it just like this for now. And now what we want to do is take, in the ch take the charge into account. So in this case, it's two minus, which means that two elements, uh, which means that two electrons will be given to the molecule. So let's just look at the electronegativity. So carbon has an electronegativity of 2.55, whereas oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.44. So evidently, oxygen has a higher one. So electronegativity um, is obviously the tendency of an atom to gain a shared pair of electrons. And in this case, um, that means that uh, that element is more likely to want electrons. They have a stronger attraction to electrons, which in this case is represented by oxygen since it has a higher electronegativity. So we're going to give the two electrons to oxygen. So what we do is since there are three oxygens, we can just give one to each of them. So 
So now let's draw the dots and crosses. So I'm going to represent crosses with the carbon and uh, dots with the oxygen. So we're going to give seven electrons to this oxygen over here. I'm actually going to make that more obvious to do like that. Then seven to this one over here. That's one extra for both of them. And then six to this one, since that one's not going to gain another one. Let me just write that like that. And then the carbon has four valence electrons. Which we represent like that. Now what we need to do is start joining them up. So um, oxygen and carbon both want to fill up their octet and gain ele eight electrons. So the first thing to do is for each oxygen, we're likely just going to, um, for the oxygen with six valence electrons, we're going to have a double bond since that wants to fill it up to eight. So a double bond with carbon is over here. Then the other two oxygens only want one more, one, one more electron since it has seven already. So we can draw that by linking them like that. And now we can just um, draw our final structure. So if we scroll down, we can say that the structure looks like C, then a double bond with the top oxygen since it has fewer electrons. And we can draw the outer shell electrons. Then one for the oxygen below, which has six outer electrons. Another one with the oxygen below which also has six valence, valence electrons. And carbon does not have any valence electrons left. However, we can see that with the addition of all these atom, uh, with all these electrons, it added four electrons actually from, each, from the oxygens collectively. Since it already had four to begin with, four plus four is eight, so it also satisfies the octet rule. And obviously not to forget, we need to put the square brackets since this is a charged molecule and it has a charge of two minus, so we put the two minus around that. And that is how you draw the carbonate molecule. And in this respect, if you keep working like that for ions and identifying when data bonds are needed, then you'll be able to successfully draw Lewis structures and help you further on in the course. So I hope this video helped.